Many rock spots. A few days into a month long trip and I thought I'd set myself the challenge today using only a Woomera, a coffee bag and this traditional hunting spear. This is all I'm allowed to use today to catch myself food. I've got minimal rations in the boat but I've promised myself that if I don't catch anything I'm not eating a bloody thing today all right so I've just rocked up on this low set mangrove rocky island it looks pretty crocky but hopefully a likely chance of being able to find a, a fish a crab mud mussels something to eat today it is really dense really really dense looks like it's just gonna be me the pigeons and the crocodiles today anyway let's get to it Look at this coral deposit. It's just meters of thick coral all through the mangroves here. I'm a bit unsure whether to just go and walk into the thick of it and look for crabs. I might keep walking around the outside just to get a, a bit better lay of the land. an hour and it just occurred to me that I didn't bring any water. I broke one of my golden rules today. Hydration is the key to happiness. Ow! Sharp coral. So I forgot water but hopefully I'll be right for a good few hours anyway and then I'll make my way back to the boat. Hopefully with a big lot of food. I've been walking along this weathered side for a while and I think it's a bit windy to try and spear something on the water. So I'm going to come in here to the guts of it and see if there's anything going in the mangroves. So there's a baby Torres Strait Island pigeon. It's literally like two meters in front of me. Hey, hello. That's my best pigeon sound. So they must all be here to nest. Hopefully you can hear that. There's thousands, thousands of these Torres Strait Island pigeons. Oh look, there's a nest there. See that? The fork of the branch. There's another nest right next to me. Little pigeon nest. I literally went in about five meters into there and there was this huge hole. <laughs> Have a go at that crab. Have a go at it. Look at the nippers. <laughs> That's a big crab. Oh, it hasn't long changed its shell. So it's pretty soft. You're going to the shark, aren't you? You're brekkie, mate. Oh, mate. Look at this. Look at that hole. Surely there's a crab in that. I can feel something in there. I can feel. I can feel the hard shell. Oh, I think it looks like a female. Look at this. Jeez, maybe that's a male nipper. Maybe the female's been eating the male. I'm gonna feel that one's a female. I'm not gonna take the risk. And I'm sure as hell while I'm out here by myself, I'm gonna put my arm or my hand down there. Or I'll keep moving. That's really, really promising though. I hope you can see that. There's a giant crab just sunning itself out the front of its hole. Just the remains. It's this magical crab place. I'm gonna have a little bit of a walk deeper into this system. Just trying to be mindful that it's hard to move fast. There is a legit chance that there could be a croc in here. Walk along here. There's a big one in there. And look over here. Give me a big one in there for sure. And then look here. There's another crab in there. There's just crab layers everywhere. There seems to be a direct correlation between the amount of mud crabs and the amount of sand flies biting 
your legs and your hands and your neck, but that's all right. We've got crabs in the bag. Let's keep moving. It's been whitened by the sun and weathered, but that there is a very big crab. That's a serious crab lair. I don't think anyone's home, but whatever made that is a giant. No one home. That is a big crab. That is a giant crab. We're gonna get the Umbra. Oh no! How did I mess that up? Oh, I should just use the Woomera from the start, not the spear. And that goes back about two meters. It's so deep. I'm finding there's a couple of different types of base around the mangroves. One's this coral that's got a, a muddy layer, and then the rest is just thicker mud. And I'm finding most of the bigger holes and crabs are being where this is. So if you are looking for yourself, Try and find this sort of country with mangroves through it. It's just opened up to a bit of a Coralian mangrove lagoon. I've been going for a couple of hours now and it is really, really hot and sweating bullets. I think I'll just give this a look for an hour and then start heading back towards the boat so I don't end up becoming too dehydrated. But let's check this out first, see what's in here. There's a ray feeding in the shallows. It is pretty clean and pretty shallow, but it's mainly all these trees that have knocked down, most likely in a storm and have died. There's probably a lot of crabs under them and at high tide fish should come in here for protection. But I'm just a bit sus to go in there because there's almost certainly a resident croc that just lives up in there somewhere. So I'll just stick to the fringes of it. disappointed in that. Hopefully it grows back the other one, but I'll eat this. <sighs> Have we got this? A bit of aluminium pipe, which is going to act as a brilliant croc deter. <laughs> Fortunately there's a little bit of a breeze because it is I've already set it, but it's yeah, seriously hot. Middle of summer, one of the hottest parts of Australia. A couple more big holes, but no one home. All right, back to the boat. We're back at the anchorage. See that tide's gone and, and snuck out on me. The boat's high and dry. Have to wait a few more hours. That's one of the benefits of having a six mil plate aluminium bottom. Can end up on the rocks, no stress. I'm gonna take down about five liters of water. Yeah, I didn't think the tide would drop this low. Have a look at this. This is a moray eel. You've got incredibly sharp teeth. Oh, it's another one. It's on the land. Look at this thing. Oh, it's terrifying. Another one. We'll get out of your way. We'll get out of your way. Yeah, I've had a moray eel bite me before on the finger. They've got incredibly sharp teeth will stay out of their way. Pretty cool to see though, just hiding up in the mangroves. See that big dark ring? That's all bait. Wow. That's an upside down empty clamshell with a moray eel living in it. If his head will come out. Just up here, its fins are out of the water, but there's two reef sharks, black tip reef sharks. This one ahead of me, probably 15 meters away, is a really good size. See if I can get up for a closer look. It's coming straight towards me. I'll just stay dead still. Oh, it's like a meter in front of me. Oh, that was so close. That was close. Yes! Oh! Oh! 
That was a rabbit fish. Really, really good eating fish. And I just hit it in the back and it came off. Where did I drop the warmer? I don't think I should be using the spear when there's rocks or coral in the way. Oh, I was close, just not a good enough shot, I guess. Rabbit fish! Ah. Simple seafood on the menu again. I just did a coal base here um, on the coral. And I've thrown a couple of the nippers on and the mud crab that I hand speared because that was dead and I don't have any ice or fridge. And then the one that's live, I'll eat that for dinner. And then this rabbit fish, which after 5,000 throws of the spear in the Woomera, I got one. I'll have that for dinner as well with the crab. If you're only tuning into this series now, I'm a few days into the Blue Highway 2.0. I'm traveling solo up the east coast of Australia, a really remote section of the northeastern coast. Right now where I sit, I'm probably maybe 200 miles away from the nearest person or postcode or help or anything. I've got a, you know, like an EPIRB if, if the boat started sinking or a crocodile was latched onto my leg, but I wanted to come out here and test myself and get to know myself better. If you want exclusive content, ask us directly with us, jump on our Patreon. It's in the link of the bio website. Yeah, for now, I'm gonna try and not sweat to death and enjoy a few of mud crabs. Oh, the best part. Oh, so tender. Oh, wow. Well. Best part, right there. Unfortunately, they're not the fullest mud crabs. They're still growing into their shell, hence why they're a little bit soft, but there's the lollipop of the mangroves. So juicy. I really hope that if you like crabs and you've never eaten one of these, that you get to enjoy one straight off the coals one day. And do it when you're real hungry like I am. <laughs> it tastes double as good. All right, on to the next adventure. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, that's a good fish. Pulling into this beach to see if I could find a good anchorage and I was like, oh, I'll throw a popper off the beach. First cast have been smoked. Oh, there's a lot of rocks here. Got to try and get it over here. But there's no rocks. No rocks and crocs. Oh! Just threw the lure, but it was a little GT. Released himself. Oh, let's do that again. Look at the colour formations through these rocks. 
all the way along the edge of this island. All right, I'm gonna get back to the boat. Just gonna wait for this fire to go down, get a coal base going for dinner, and throw the lure around on high tide. My first fish speared with the Woomera. Oh, and I love rabbit fish. If any of my mates from the Torres Strait Islands are watching this, I'm thinking of you. Eating parsa on the beach, just straight on the fire, straight up, direct. Rabbit fish directly. I'm so stoked. So stoked. <laughs> 